we're going to tackle a serious issue. This month, we're shining a light on Josephine County, where a large number of missing persons cases have gone unsolved. Yeah. It's great to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Gwen Barringer. I'm the lead coordinator and founder of a little thing called the Josephine County Missing Person Project. And we're here today to help raise awareness for over 25 of our locally missing. My name's April, and this is my brother Kevin. He went missing in 87. Um, even though it's been 36 years, it still hurts, and we would like any information. If anybody knows anything, we would just love our family to bring him home. Kevin had some mental health problems. Um, he was on a motorcycle, and he was headed to California, and we received a call that they had found his belongings up at Cave Junction. We've never heard another thing since. My name is Gaynor Redding. Lisa Cronin is my daughter. She has been missing since December 19th, 2019. She was living with her boyfriend. Everything seemed to be okay. She seemed very happy. Her daughter tried calling her and he said she was at the store. He'd have her call him back. And this went on for three days. There's always an excuse why Lisa couldn't answer her phone. I called him and he got mad at me for bugging him said that uh, he was mad at her and if I find her, let him know. He'd do something about it. The next day, he threatened to slice my throat for bothering him and everything she owned is missing. Nothing left of her, like she never existed. It's never been solved, the state police still have it. He got evicted from his home for beating up his 80-year-old landlord and he's in prison for four years now. When they evicted him, they went in and searched the house. They found a baseboard with two bullet holes and blood. And they just recently got it sent to the lab. So maybe we'll have some answers. My name's Aaliyah Marie Corey, and Kenneth Greth was my son's father. He has been missing since 2001, and there's been no known instances of what happened, honestly. And they found our car at the bottom of a ravine, and still no one's came forward with it so um, I was lucky enough to actually fall upon this group because someone tagged me in the Facebook group because my son's father was actually one of the main pictures in the composite. Unfortunately uh, living in smaller communities you find other recreational things to do such as drugs and uh, he was mixed in with the wrong people. Regardless of the situation that he was in, he was still someone's parent and someone's child. Hi, uh, my name is John Fry, uh, and my missing daughter is Fauna Fry, and she's been missing for almost uh, three years now. She disappeared after a tragedy, her brother passed, and uh, she left from Eugene to come down here to visit some old friends because we've lived here off and on since 1977. Today I was just on another, you know, possible lead up in the mountains driving around and um, we've had several searches with dogs and the search and rescue. I think we're going to have at least one more of those. He's from a, a family of five kids. He has a twin sister. Um, he was my best friend, he taught me how to drive, he was my champion, and, and he just always had words of wisdom to, to give me, to make me feel better, and he he's just was a great guy. Lisa was a very caring person. She loved everybody. If you needed help, Lisa would give it to you. And I really believe that's what she felt about her boyfriend. He needed help and she was going to help him straighten his life out. Instead, it ended her life. She always had a beautiful smile on her face. That's what you'd see when you see Lisa. That's Lisa. She worked in uh, real estate and uh, insurance. Uh, we did a lot of hiking together, you know, or 20 mile hikes, you know, was, was not that unusual, you know. And uh, an eight mile hike was considered a short hike. That's why I got a tip that I followed up this morning. I was out in the woods up around uh, up, uh, Bear Camp Road. And he was just a cool kickback guy that really wanted to honestly uh, adventure out outside of the small town that he was from. And he ended up in another small town, but it was a lot different than where he was from. And he was just getting to learn his community. He was involved in a lot of restoration project actually here in town. He redid the Rogue Theater here in Grants Pass and did all the remodeling when they did their revamp in 1999. I, my son never knew until 
this last year that he was actually missing. It's the worst thing any mother could go through. I pray every night for my daughter. I hear her yelling, help me, Mom, they're killing me, they're killing me. You know, I need answers. I need answers. So if any of you know, please, please come to us. We need answers. There's so many missing. He could be alive and walk around the corner in a moment. And, and if he's gone, just the thought that he's out there and his body's not claimed and not home with us is, is hurtful as well. I mean, you carry it with you and you hope that one day that you're going to get some news that they've been located. Being involved in a situation where there's somebody missing in your life, it's not something you ever ex think that you're going to experience, but it happens. And unfortunately, it's happening a lot here in Josephine County. Missing people is a piece of the overall larger puzzle of a broken system. This is Erica Hogue. She went missing on May 17th, 2018 from Selma, Oregon, and she's kind of the reason why I'm here today doing this. Her case was kind of what started this. Um, she disappeared in Selma and uh, allegedly walked off into the woods in the midst of a mental health crisis. Because she may have had a firearm that had a tactical flashlight attachment that she and the rest of the people that she was staying with at the time used as a flashlight on the property, search and rescue was not activated because she might have had a gun, because she might have been experiencing a schizophrenic episode. And then after I started looking into her case, it led me to all these others that you see here, all of these signs, all of these flyers, just these are stories that are going underreported. They're not being given the resources that they need to be solved, basically. We're in Grants Pass right here. We have the Josephine County Sheriff's Department and the Grants Pass Police Department here. We have nothing in Cave Junction. I live in Cave Junction, that's where I am from. We have nothing. We have OSP and jo JOCO, like the JOCO Sheriff's Office that occasionally comes out. But I mean, I had a woman trying to bang down the door of my house at like two o'clock in the morning. And the only reason a cop got sent was because I told the guy, if you don't send someone out here and she makes it into my house, you're gonna have to send a coroner and I don't think anyone wants that. You call the cops half the time when you live in the more rural areas and the answer you get is that this is beyond our available resources. I was 17 when Kevin disappeared and I was unable to do anything. I didn't know what to do. And this just gives me an opportunity to come out and hold a sign and say, hey, he has a family that loves him. Somebody knows something, you know, and somebody's seen something. If anybody's seen Fauna, please um, report it to uh, Josephine County is where she disappeared, so. Word of mouth is really what's going to get these cases resolved. People saying things to people who will then tell the things. Does everybody share posts when people are missing? Because more than likely they really are missing. It's not because they just choose to be gone. So please share, 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 and these could be your loved ones also. So don't be afraid to participate in being part of the community and the unity in the community. We are a normal, non-dramatic family, and it happened to us, and it can happen to anybody. And, um, you know, the thing that the public can do is if they just see any, any of these faces, if, even if they kind of, I'm not sure, call. Just make that call and let someone else look into it then. I just want people to know that if your loved one were to go missing, even if we didn't agree on the same things, I would still help you look for them. I would still help print flyers, make flyers, do what I could. And I think the more people should feel the same.